Online Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, Doctor Who fans, and welcome to the... All right, I'm going to stop. Right <laughs> welcome to After Buzz TV. I, I said we're stopping. <laughs> you uh, said you were Guys, stop. welcome to the Doctor Who Classics After Show here at After Buzz TV. I'm your host, Zach Wilson. We're talking about the 10th planet tonight, and let me introduce our fantastic panel, who are humans and not <laughs> Cybermen. Um, to my left, Katie Cullen. Hi, all my buddies. No more. I'm saying no more. Put down. I can do this Put all down. night. <laughs> Next to her, the fantastic Megan Salinas. Hey, everybody. And Tari Miller. Hey, hey. I gave only one person a superlative this time for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> you guys uh, we're not good hanging. enough for them. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> you guys left me hanging. You should have done the voice. Nope. <laughs> His foot went down. <laughs> the clown is down. No means no. <laughs> uh, so, big episode, a monumental episode for multiple reasons. The origin story of one of our biggest villains, and the, uh, some people would say not the first regeneration story, but just when the first regeneration occurs. Yeah. Uh, because we only see it for about five seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Right <laughs> at the end. Um, so what did you, well, I mean, first reactions, what do you guys think of the Cybermen of 1966? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I'm going to preface this by saying the Cybermen are my favorite, you know, villains in, in New Who. Okay. Uh, I, I absolutely loved that, that whole, you know, parallel universe uh, two-parter that we got introduced, well, reintroduced to them with David Tennant. But oh my gosh. <laughs> Even just looking at the DVD cover art with, that has them, like, the first thing you notice is they have a giant spotlight over their crotch. I mean, <laughs> granted, <laughs> yep. Granted, this, this was the 60s, and granted, they, they, you know, they did what they could with costuming and things like that. But man, do they look ridiculous! <laughs> I mean, I will say that compared, like, on the DVD cover art, it looks even more ridiculous than it does on screen. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, that's they, not by much. But yeah. they are creepy. That's the thing is, they are scary. And when you, I think, when you get into like what they are in this episode, like they're not the fully robotic versions that we that we know. Yeah. Um, but they they're human. They're humans who fell into a different path. At the end of the day, that's what they say. So, I mean, they show up. The, 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 the little miniature <laughs> ship, like, lands in the snow. Um, the doctor and uh, our new co our new companions, who we never we didn't get a chance to meet because we, we wanted to get to this episode. Uh, our current companions are Ben and Polly. Um, and we'll talk about them in a little bit. But the they land at this Arctic base. Um, it's like sort of a military base. In the 80s. Yeah, it's yeah. 1986. <laughs> so it's 20 years in the future for them. Mm -hmm. um, which is, a, it's that's an interesting conscious choice to make it within reach. It's like, that's not that far away. Um, and I think they wanted to do that because they were, t they were talking about like space travel and uh, there's some war stuff going on in there. The way that the world functions, I think, was a, a, probably more of a political commentary than we can kind of see by watching it well, in, and in you don't expect your show to be around for 20 years, you know. The, yeah. the longest shows last, you know, unless you're a soap <laughs> opera, is usually like five years, maybe 10 yeah. years if you're lucky. Um, we kind of are a soap opera. All the people <laughs> falling in love and coming back and leaving and evil robotic doubles and we keep replacing <laughs> the actors. I mean, let's be real. We're kind of a soap opera here. No one's in a coma, Just though. better dubbing. <laughs> well. Um, that happens. I'm trying to oh, say, yeah. like, there must be, <laughs> in 50 years, somebody has to have gone into a coma. A regeneration Probably. special for 10. He spent 90% of that episode in a coma, woke up and quoted The Lion King. Uh, it doesn't count if it's that only one episode. Yeah. Uh, you have to yeah, be gone I mean, for a yes. season. Yeah, you have to be a in a coma for an extended coma. amount of time. Um, 
But it's uh, we open up. I mean, well, let's just talk about it real briefly. Let's talk about our companions. Um, ben and Polly are current ones, and they they're people. They seem good. Yeah, we didn't really get a chance to meet them and know them, but they're not bad by any means. We just uh, we don't have a connection with them because we had to like move forward. Right. Um, for anyone who's curious, uh, I uh, the our the last episode that we watched was Stephen and Vicky were our companions at the time. Steven said goodbye. Uh, so spoilers if you were going to go back and watch these. But Steven says goodbye in an episode called The Savages um, to help uh, these group called The Elders and there's another uh, negotiate their differences. He's like going to be a peace mediator. Uh, Steven is? Yep. He grew a lot. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I would hope so. He gets to talk to people. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Let um, me consult my panda council. Mm. But then Vicky has an even more interest. She has a really cool goodbye because they go back to the Trojan War era and they, they meet the Greek uh, King Priam. And she and the, the, the king decides that her name will be Cressida. And so she ends up marrying Troilus. Uh, king, the king's son, which is the famous uh, story that uh, both Chaucer and Shakespeare have both written, Troilus and Cressida. So she gets to be a huge part of history, <laughs> yes. this girl from the 25th she, century. She's a legend now. That's really cool. <laughs> Shakespeare wrote about her. And then he met the doctor, so it got <laughs> real confusing. <laughs> um, I, oh, now I need to go back and watch the Shakespeare Code. To that, see if they make, if that came they up. drop reference to that. That Could would be. be really funny. Just like, oh, this one that you're working on. Yeah, no, she wasn't really like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There needs to be more. There's, I'm supposed to be in that story, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Needs more me. <laughs> would you believe she's not actually Greek? No, she's from the 25th century. I don't even know where she's from. Um, but ben and Polly, we haven't seen much of them, so they just kind of fall into generic companion roles. Yes. Ben is the adult male companion, and so he says things and makes mistakes and does action-y stuff. And Polly is the adult female companion, so she has emotions and also says things and also <laughs> makes mistakes. <laughs> so that, description. And then that's pretty much it. We don't get a lot of, these are my motivations, these are how I feel. It's like, pff, you know these people, let's keep going. But it's also, this is, a, this is a big story, and I think that they are very focused at this point in the doctor and what's going on and telling this like very interesting story that this could have been like what I liked about this episode is that you could have taken the doctor and like the doctor who mythology out of it mm -hmm. and just told this as a science fiction story. They kind of did halfway through the third episode. Well, at this point and a, and a <laughs> lot of real. a lot of episodes at the time uh, what well, basically what William Hartnell is going through a lot of health issues. He's having a lot of memory problems, he's having trouble remembering his lines. He's stashing his like his scripts in like different places around the TARDIS, around the set and like anywhere Aww. he can put them so that he can do it cuz they everybody loves him. He's the doctor. And it's not until they come up with the regeneration plot line that they can figure out how to continue the show without him. Um, right. If you, if you're, if you, anyone's curious to see to know more about that, I highly recommend uh, the BBC TV movie. Um, An adventure in Inve space and time. Thank you. Yes, it's a fantastic uh, biopic about William Hartnell and the creation of Doctor Who. I ha check it out. Um, <laughs> it's very interesting, and it leads right up until this episode and the regeneration. Um, but yeah, so so that's where we are, and this, so but I uh, the idea of Mondas, this planet appearing in the sky, Earth's twin planet from years ago. This is a that, soap opera. It's the evil twin. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it like the Cybermen like launched it to the end of the universe, and then came back <laughs> um, because they ran out of energy. It's a very real storyline, like. We think that the energy crisis is just today, but it was very much in the minds of people even 50 years ago. Yeah. Um, the idea that you could run out of energy and they need to go harvest it from somewhere else. Um, what do you guys think of the whole everything with the planet and the, the, the science fiction story that's at the heart of this? Um, well, for me, I guess I have two thoughts. One is considering that this is another kind of Earth, do you think that they... I'm wondering if they stole, if the Daleks stole the idea of propelling a whole planet um, <laughs> from the Cybermen. Um, because, I mean, they are, are essentially driving their planet around the universe, which is an odd idea, <laughs> only precedented by the Daleks trying to do it to our planet. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, yeah, it's hypothetical. But yeah, no, but it's interesting. Um, I, 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 to be honest, I'm not sure that they, the the writers probably went that deep into it. Um, <laughs> but and, well, at this point, it's not like the the current era where you get these like sort of intricately dropped little right. hints that will build up to some massive event. Um, but I, it's a good parallel, and then you never know. I almost kind of like this better. Where we don't have this big, huge thing that we have to cap off every season with. We're like, okay, we got anywhere between two and six episodes, and we tell the story, and then we continue on. So if you missed the previous story, you're probably going to be okay. Mm. Maybe a little confused, but mostly okay. No, right. oh, I highly disagree. I like, the, like, especially like the season we're getting now, which you can tell is building slowly towards something. But e And each episode is fun on its own, but like that intricate woven thread makes... It, the whole story real because and it also makes our characters more real because they're going on a journey as opposed to just like hey, we're going on an adventure today <laughs> well the difference is that i don't like moffat all right well we're so, not gonna get into that anyway here. Yeah. Not and every movie. commenter goes what <laughs> <laughs> we're not getting started in this debate um, <laughs> throw down yeah. a smoke bomb and leave the panel <laughs> um, good night but uh, I like the Cybermen's design and like their backstory. What what I think is very different between, and I'm curious what you guys have, if you guys feel similar between these Cybermen and our Cybermen is that these are not a hundred percent villainous. They were relatively polite. Like I mean, obviously they're shooting people and things like that. But in their minds, they kind of don't know any better because they they don't feel emotion and everything mm -hmm. like that. And it's less, you know, we're going to conquer and upgrade the universe, and more of like we're we're you know depriving your planet of energy. We'll take you to our planet, and you'll become like us. And to somebody who doesn't feel emotion, you know, obviously you're not going to see all the moral issues with that. But they could just as easily just kill everyone on the planet, and they choose not to. Like that's kind of their big plan is to is to make humanity like they've become. Yeah. Well, I'd imagine they're more neutral than evil as far as alignments go. So it's like this this is the most logical choice. I mean, we can't let our planet die for reasons, but uh, we can murder the hell out of your planet. And then make you like us so you can live on our planet. So we all get to live and everyone's happy, right? In right? fairness, <laughs> wouldn't as humanity... As a Cyberman can be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, not happy. Everyone continues to function. <laughs> but in fairness, this humanity, I feel like, would do the same thing. Like, we try to save the Earth yeah. by destroying another planet. Yeah. That, it's uh, like, uh, oh, you can live with us. And, It'll be great. Yeah, and look, it's like, hey, we're not, it's not like we're just going to kill you all. We're totally going to save you and make your lives way better by removing everything that plagues you, fear, sadness, I grief, mean, all this stuff. I that's kind of the story of, like, imperialism is going <laughs> in say. and changing the culture to make it like your own because it's like, this is better. This is, And so it's kind of nice to see that in the science fiction setting with something so alien and so removed but still kind of human. Mm -hmm. British imperialism. <laughs> well, American too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, imperialism in general. In general, yeah. Um, I'm just waiting for that one person to come back on and be like, actually. <laughs> uh, but it, it's a very, it's a softer version of the Cybermen. It's not, we, there's no, we will upgrade you. Yeah, there's We're, no, you will be deleted. Yeah, it's we just, just kind of we can fix part. you. Like, we can make it better. Um, it's, it's artificial intelligence, like, just following a directive. Like, save the people, or save our planet, and, like, keep upgrading everyone without saying that. I don't even know that it is Fantastic artificial word. intelligence. Well, because I mean, they're still people. Yeah. They're just people with crazy cybernetic enhancements with no and emotions. no feels. I, I mean, I, well, I guess that's the that's the debate. Sorry, sorry. I mean, well, yeah, they're they're more cyborg than like artificial AI, AI. Yeah. I mean, they started off just like us, but then slowly kind of replaced different parts. It's like if you had a like an action figure and parts started breaking off so you started putting other action figures on there and eventually you had a new action figure <laughs> you sound with the like same you're, head. You sound like you're speaking from experience. <laughs> I mean, well, no. it, it's a classic philosophical debate. About it's the, the boat, right? It's the broom. Oh. The broom. It's um if you take if you have a broom and you repl and the handle break the the broom stick breaks so you replace the stick and then the br the brush gets worn out and you replace the brush. 
is it the same broom? If you do that, then if you do that three more times, three or four times more is over, it still is, it, is it at all the same broom? And the argument would be no, it's not. Um, so are these still human if all of their parts have been replaced? Why wouldn't you buy a better broom? <laughs> it would cost less over the course of, yeah. <laughs> Instead of and I break the metaphor. Instead of uh, the same one. Sorry, I'm just being a pain in the butt tonight for you, they aren't did I? Buy, they did buy a better broom. It's called when they hired Neil Gaiman to write his Cyberman episode. <laughs> uh, I'll give you that. Shots fired. I will give you that one. Um, Neil Gaiman is always the better anyway, broom. <laughs> moving forward. But, like, um... But so I guess they do have a human brain. But, like, again, just when you remove emotions from it, like, you've removed a big piece of what makes it. So it's only, it's basically like the battery is still in there. The battery is the only part left that, of the original machine. It's amazing that you can keep living without a frontal lobe. Mm. No, but I know what reference you were going Thank for. You. Stop <laughs> Stop Thank you. Stop it. Thank you. It is Halloween, I guess. But, um, <laughs> but I like what you said earlier, even though by what we're used to today they kind of look silly you're absolutely right because like if you look at the designs you know everything that would indicate you know humanity in terms of like facial expressions and everything like that has been removed from the cybermen and again it kind of looks silly when it when it's basically just a sock over someone's face but but that's what they're going for in terms of like removing that emotion and so it's very interesting you know when you stop laughing to to look at it that way <laughs> they don't even have lip flaps you're right no yeah, yeah. cuz when they open their mouths it's it's kind of like watching a godzilla movie the words come out <laughs> but obviously the lip flaps well, don't well it's right. it's a speaker effectively it's same yeah. way, same way that like cybermen today don't move they don't have mouths that move they <laughs> just talk they, they don't need to um, but so the the earth launches into like we have to stop this like they have a space shuttle that's gone down they've lost um i and a very progressively forward uh space program because they they had a black man mm -hmm. they had two yeah. black guys yeah. in this episode um yeah i uh, i was just thinking about the one on the special but yeah the, it's it, that's a that's a it's sort of like star trek in the sense of like it's going it's taking a leap ahead and showing like this is what the future is going to be like this is just going to be normal nobody's yeah. going to care um and that's uh, it, Doctor Who is, I, I guess, a little bit progressive in the way. I don't know what British television was really like at nineteen in nineteen sixty six in terms of other shows. This is what the future is going to be like. Earth gets attacked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, for the, what four hundred, five hundred episodes or so, Earth will continue to be attacked on a regular basis. But they'll survive. <laughs> and everyone's continually surprised when aliens show up. I like, know, Dalek's right? trying to take over the planet. <laughs> Why is this a surprise? <laughs> um, I, they were inside, like Donna. She just like didn't go outside that him. day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so they then then when this planet is overhead, it's not just like robots or and the doctor like showing up. They they have to figure the the secretary general or the general secretary. Sorry, it's a difference. Um, is launching it wants to launch nukes and uh general cutler is like my son's up there i can't launch a nuke until he's out of range um we get yeah it's reversed cutler is all all for the bombs and uh secretary is not yeah we really yes. we really need yes. to not nuke them we really need to not do that but sir can i have permission to take whatever measures i need to make to take to stop them? Of course. Yeah, you're going to have permission yeah. to do that. Don't tell that to the guy that was just asking you about nukes. Yeah. Biggest <laughs> loophole. You, you, you'd think someone in politics would be able to not <laughs> to do through. that kind of double speak. <laughs> that they would know where the loopholes maybe are was, and know how to close them. Maybe he wanted them. him to use the nukes, but he wanted plausible deniability. I don't know. Yeah. I would have expected a very obvious wink at the camera were that the case. Like, yeah. sure They're you talking, have permission. They're wink. talking over the radio, Katie. He's not going to see him wink. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I don't think the general secretary really thought about it. Yeah, I think oh, he's I like, for the audience. Yeah, do whatever you can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, I mean, and that's kind of something interesting, too, because Cutler isn't, it also isn't painted as, like, a heartless villain. He His actions are motivated, yeah, he's doing the wrong thing, but his actions are motivated by love for his son and panicking that there's not going to be anything that he can do for his son. Because he's a real person, not yeah. he's a flat character. Yeah. Um, but so they launch into this, like, we're going to save the day, like, we're going to, but, like, we have to, the doctors, we, we can't let them nuke the place. You have, um... 
uh, this doctor trying to help him, and Ben is like trying to help defuse the bomb at this point. Like, we're, we're jumping over a couple of things here, but it's yeah. a lot of like running around the Cybermen taking people hostage with their little fanny pack <laughs> fan <laughs> weapons. Some occasionally uh, someone dies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and they're they're trying to figure out what to do. Uh, and Ben has a line that they could never have known how ridiculous it would be and how perfect years later when he says, oh, I can just imagine trying to tackle one of them geezers with a screwdriver. Um, <laughs> oh, <yeah. Hey. laughs> And I had to pause it because I lost it. I lost it at that moment. Like, oh. talk about the accidental lines dropped. <laughs> Did you guys it's miss it? Pretty amazing. I completely missed that. Like, yep. you know, it's just something that he said that went like completely under my radar. He's just holding an actual screwdriver, and he's like, "How am I gonna beat one of these things? With one of them geezers with this this screwdriver needs more Sonic." Uh, the oh. idea was planted. <laughs> the idea was planted. How oh. could they beat one of those guys with a screwdriver? Build a better screwdriver. <laughs> Now, if you replace the bit and you replace the handle, is it the same <laughs> screwdriver? No. <laughs> it's better. If you add a little more Sonic, is it the same? No, it's a different. It's the. It's a different uh, screwdriver, but the same programming. Ah. Uh, <laughs> it didn't have programming before. It was manual. No. Um, Says you. When? When do we? When do we have? <laughs> what? What? Megan, go I, I want to know when. When did they introduce the sonic screwdriver? I want to say that was like four or five. I was it three. It's as early as three. Okay. Yeah, it okay. might be earlier. I'm not sure, but I, I know they had it by the time three rolled around. I know it. I, I'm fairly certain it wasn't in two. It wasn't two. Um, I don't know. I have to do some. Re I'll have to commenters. Look into that. Well, well, let yeah. Know. Let us uh, remind us when the first Sonic screwdriver shows up because we definitely want to go do that episode. It should be fun. Yeah. Okay. So, so apparently, the Sonic screwdriver was first introduced in 1968. Oh, okay, so, so, so I guess it was number two. two. So yeah. I am totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Booth Girl. Uh, thank Booth you, Marissa. Girl Marissa. <laughs> um, that's the power of the internet, you guys. Yay. That they didn't have in 1966. <laughs> they had to, like, wait for the Doctor Who magazines to come in the mail the or something. The more you know. Any, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so they, they're trying to dismantle the bomb. And at this point, we're moving into the the final episode, which is a famously one of the biggest lost episodes. And we're about to enter an era where tons of stuff. We have to skip all of next season of this show yeah. because none of the episodes are complete. Wow. I think almost every episode in that season, like not even just the stories, almost every episode is missing. That's Interesting. Wow. depressing. Yeah. That is genuinely depressing. Yeah. That's why um, that April Fool's story about how a satellite was reflecting back broadcasts of, la of lost Doctor Who episodes was such a big deal. Yeah, I totally fell for that. I, a lot of <laughs> people talked a about it on people After fell for it. I did not see this story. It but, was an uh, April Fool's thing. But it went around the internet about a year and a half after it was published, so it wasn't on April Fool's, and no one checked the date. So everyone thought we were getting all these lost episodes back, and we were all like, excited. No, and then it was like, no. <laughs> look at the date on that I one. I mean, you never <laughs> know. One day they keep finding them in like vaults in Zimbabwe, <laughs> uh, and people's attics and auctions. I'm still and... holding out for the Ark of the Covenant theory, where it's just in that warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> um, or the BBC is like, yes, make them wait and beg for it. Um, the Illuminati have <laughs> the BBC Illuminati. The BBC Illuminati have information in those episodes be. that can't be released to the public. <laughs> Secret Disney symbols. can have a vault, so can we. And the Illuminati like, puts me on their list. Together. I'm just picturing, like, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of do the Gendo Ikari thing, just... Brace the fingers and glare menacingly over you need, them. You need glasses for that. I do need glasses for that, Tari. Can I borrow? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but uh, if you guys, if anybody, if we had a chance to watch it on this, uh, on the DVD, the most recent release of it, and they did a fantastic job. If you guys haven't had a chance to take a look, if you watch, they had the VHS recovery episode, which has stills effectively just throughout the episode of like, this is what's happening, and then occasionally like a little text will scroll by and be like, this is what's, because the audio is complete. Mm -hmm. It's a little bad quality here and there. Uh, but 
they painstakingly went in and reconstructed it with this amazing animation. Yeah. Which I don't know if you I don't know if you noticed this when when watching it, and I I definitely don't know if this is a thing um, because I haven't checked the names and everything like that. But while we were watching it, it was very reminiscent of a fan animation that w- like was on YouTube years and years ago. You know, quote unquote Doctor Who anime, um, and it was actually pretty spectacular. I think the YouTube user's name was like Great Ota King or something like that. And I was wondering, I was like, well, what came out first? Did that person? do their fan animations based on the t- style of animation from this DVD or or like did they actually see this guy's stuff and were they like oh we want to get him to work on this because I, I don't know the guy's name unfortunately but um well the copyright on the DVD is 2013 so. well uh, yeah I mean this was this was just on last year the animation yeah. but like doc, I mean they so doc, they doc, might have hired that they person. might have they hired might the have person be because awesome. it's like spot on that particular style yeah. the the doctor doctor who does have a history of like really respecting their fans the um the current the season eight intro sequence was originally created by a fan and they yeah. they sort of uh, like pay, brought him in I'm sure they paid him something um, and I'm sure retouched it redid yeah. a couple of things but more or less it's just what he put online as like a fan like this is fun (laughs) yeah well i i hope that's the case and granted you know i could be completely wrong on that but like watching it it was like i've seen this style of animation before with doctor who so i hope that's exactly what happens they just picked him up and they're like you we like we like the cut of your jib do more of that (laughs) come work for us yeah Uh, do the whole thing yourself (laughs) <laughs> Which, like, and that's were, why it took until 2013. More, there were more animators on this. <laughs> oh, I know. Thank goodness. I know. Um, but so the, at this point, like, the, but what do you guys think? Just bottom line of the animation. Do you have fun with it? I mean, I I loved it actually. I I kind of part of me wishes the whole ep- the whole story was animated, just because it added a whole another element to it. Like especially the laser blasts and like the smoke and. At the end, when they all uh, power down and you get to see them like fizzle into nothing, as yeah. opposed to like if there were people in there, you just see them on the floor writhing. So I felt like it it really added a new depth to it. I agree. Apart from the sense of deja vu that I was feeling, like I was more visually engaged with that particular episode than I have been f- throughout all of Classic Who so far. Um, I, I couldn't take my eyes away from it. Well, I think part of that is our generation, at least, grew up on animation. We're the Disney generation. We know all this stuff. So even if it's animation in black and white, it's going to have our attention a lot quicker than live action in black and white. Because animation in black and white is artsy, and live action in black and white is old. Or Sin City. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Sin City had color um, involved. But at, I mean, at this point, like we're we're getting closer and closer to the to the doc the end of the doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, he uh, our, our first doctor, uh, General Cutler, is like threatening to kill the doctor. He's like, "I'll kill you for <laughs> defy, uh, defying me." Uh, and, and falling then, over on my floor. Yeah. How but dare then, you? But fall then the on Cybermen. The floor. Then the Cybermen kill Cutler. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which Zap. again, I felt kind of bad for him. Like I couldn't condone his actions, but feel kind of bad for him because he was trying to save his son as misguided as he was he was gonna well he was he was gonna launch a nuke at mondas which was gonna just blow up and was gonna end up basically it raining everybody. Yeah. nuclear yeah. radiation over the entire planet right i um, felt worse for cutler's son because he's yeah. gonna come back around and be like so where's dad and he didn't <laughs> know he was talking Kid. to his dad Kid. Yeah. I thought he did at a I certain point, not knew. at first, but I think like later, because like he starts referring to him as son. Yeah, yeah, he does. But you know, it's it's one of those things where it's just you, you know, you're an older officer and you're just talking to a younger officer. So, I I feel like he knew. I think so. I don't know. Uh, I think you were supposed to know, um, <laughs> but either way, um, it, it, you're right. It wasn't completely clear, but um, basically. Uh, the Dyson and the 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 local physician f- physician physicist or whatever he is who knows how to dis- disassemble this Barclay. Yeah. Their or is names it Barclay? are Their names are who Dyson. Dyson? <laughs> Dyson was the I think hmm, Dyson I don't I don't remember what Dyson was. I know I didn't one like of the him. controllers, I believe. I kept yelling go go invent a vacuum every time he was <laughs> <laughs> Well, they 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 take apart the the nuclear bomb and they're basically like 
wave it at the Cybermen, and <laughs> yeah. it's like it just c- forces them to like shut down. Like it's in their weakened state, in their exposed state, where I'm assuming they don't have any sort of nuclear shielding. It's effectively just like if you introduced a radioactive isotope right outside your brain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it just causes them to crumble. Um, so they. they they end up winning. <laughs> the cyber Mondas melts away because they've basically stalled until the planet uh, absorbs so much energy that it just explodes. Like, yeah. Which yeah. do we know what kind of effect that was supposed to have on Earth? Because just taking energy from our planet is kind of vague. It's like, well, what kind of energy? Are well, you there were stealing of... energy from the core, or? There were power fluctuations of the satellite when Mondas was getting too close. So I would imagine that it was so it's electrical energy, um, nuclear, yeah. anything that was, came I, from a power plant. Yeah, felt like it was all it was all types of energy, like life energy, electric energy, mm-hmm. um, kinetic energy, <laughs> potential that's energy. So, that's <laughs> why you I just kind of rub your hands I together was... and Mondas will take it. Well, because yeah, like because even uh, the, the the astronauts were all losing like their own life energy, That's which true. one could assume maybe it, it was just electric electric energy since we also run on electric signals. That's true. Yeah. Um, or uh, they were building a giant spirit bomb. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, uh, we're nerds. Well, this has well, been a great episode. Well done, Tari. Um, Thank but you. so at this point, um, after that, like, the, the, the Secretary General wants a full report, and it's like, where... I love the quote. Where exactly do we begin? <laughs> uh, well. On all this him, and at this point, the do- like they the, Ben goes and he gets Penny out, and they um, or Polly Polly, Polly. Polly out. Close it's enough. Hard to keep track. Anyway, <laughs> um, and they they go back to the TARDIS, and the Doctor is there, and he collapses. Um, it's uh, it's uh, they, they he seems to have lost his sense of humor. Uh, mm. co- and then there was. Um, what did he say? He's, uh, something, uh, nope. something about we- uh, he's, he's like wearing a bit thin. Yeah. yeah. Um, which I didn't realize that that had been a reference in the 50th anniversary special. Oh. Um, when John Hurt is leaving, oh, it's about right. It seemed to be wearing a bit thin. Uh, oh. I did, uh, that was really cool. That like I I had no idea that it was that deep of a, a reference to the first Doctor, but it's a nice little parallel. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice little nod. I love that he regenerated because he needed a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I have been uh, up way too late, and the Red Bull is really bad for both of my hearts. And guys, I just I can't I can't I can't do it anymore. Peace, I'm out. <laughs> well, we know that like I mean the the, the Galfrans can just die. They can just get old, and that's effectively mm-hmm. he's an old guy. He effectively just. Got old and yeah. died. Yeah. Um, not yeah. like you didn't have to get zapped with radiation or. Didn't have to get shot I don't want or... to go. <laughs> he was just like, nah. Aww. I mean, it now was his I'm time. Um, it be okay. It's it's uh, what well, what do you guys think uh, is going to happen? We we unfortunately don't get to see the immediate reaction to uh, the doctor waking up in, in, with a new face. Well, they um to to his benefit, they saw him transform. Yeah. So to his benefit, you know, they they'd probably be confused, but I don't think they would be. I don't think they'd be in denial for a long, long time. They might be at first, like initially, but but since they actually saw it happen, I don't think it'd be like, you know, like when the doctor like meets you know the same companion and he looks completely different, and they're like, "Who are you?" <laughs> yeah, I. I feel like the audience would have been freaking out more than the companions would have. Yeah. Like, the audience is like, what just happened? And the companions are all, uh, this is awkward. Well, especially um, at Can lo- you wake up and tell us what's going on, please? Well, especially it's a kid's show, and, like, for all you can tell, like, the, who knows what that dissolve means at yeah. the time. You have no frame. Of, like, we know what we're going into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I can only imagine 1966, like, a fan of the show, a kid watching the show, seeing, like... The doctor, the doctor falling collapse. over, collapse, and then, like, all they see is this dissolve to another person's face. They're like, what does that mean? <laughs> what is happening? Mom! <laughs> Parents watching this with their kids going, oh, no, am I going to have to explain death to the... <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I mean, there's what already a lot Timmy? of death. I have no yeah. idea. <laughs> it, there's already a lot of death, but it's different when it's the, the hero of the show. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um... But so that's, the, I mean, that takes us to the end of William Hartnell. Um, 
what do you guys what do you guys have any other thoughts on this episode on Hartnell's run as a whole as w- of what we've seen it was fun the the pacing was always what got me just story to story it was always a little slow to begin with every story but as far as characters go he was hilarious yeah but we're, he was we're, a blast. we're watching four to six episodes at a time yeah, yeah that too um if you're watching 24 minutes a week like just a half hour show it's a lot it's a lot i think it moves a lot faster it's a lot more intriguing like we could, <laughs> i could just imagine like the equivalent of like after buzz tv in like the <laughs> 1960s <laughs> the predictions every week I think what the are... monk is gonna be really important <laughs> nah <laughs> A monkey? Why are you a monster? Because that's what they sounded like back then. Leave Everyone me alone. sounded like mobsters. Yes. <laughs> You're not a very British mobster, are you? Yeah. No. No, I tea. don't think you are. <laughs> it's like but turning to, what do you guys think of these crazy cyber men? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know. They don't probably think... won't be around yeah. very they long. They have lamps on their heads and they kill people with them. With the lamps. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to drop the accent before someone hurts me. Yeah, please do. <laughs> the commenters but are going to be like, what? I don't see the Cybermen sticking around for very long. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, so it, I, I really liked Hartnell's Doctor. Uh, I, more so than I thought I was going to, admittedly. Um, I didn't know what to expect in terms of like the pace, in terms of like the portrayal. But it, you can easily see why this show stuck around for so long. Yeah. 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 And you can easily see, like, why, even without William Hartnell, they wanted to keep it going. Because it is, his performance is very endearing. But the character had become bigger than the actor, you know, and the stories and adventures that this character would go through. Mm-hmm. It meant a lot to people. And so it's sad, you know, it was sad to see him go, but, like, it's kind of cool knowing that, you know, you're a part of something bigger than yourself. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's yeah. It's, it's good. So uh, with that, I think we're going to wrap up this uh, episode of After Buzz TV Doctor Who Classics. Guys, uh, I forgot to do it during the show, but please <laughs> jump onto iTunes if you get a chance. It means a lot to just go on there, just hit the subscribe button, hit us with a rating. It helps everyone here at the network not just this show not just the main doctor who show but every show it helps raise our presence on itunes it helps uh sponsors find us it helps guests find us for all the different shows getting guests for classics very difficult uh, <laughs> as the show aired 50 years ago yeah. Uh, yeah. but please keep tuning in subscribe rate uh thank you tara miller where can the people find you you can find me on Twitter at Tari J. That's T A U R I J A Y. You can also find me on the 100 season two uh, after panel tonight at 11 o'clock. Yes. Ah. <laughs> 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 uh, and I, I'm Megan. You can follow me on Twitter at the Menguin. That's T H E M E N G U I N. And I'm also on a bunch of shows here at After Buzz. I'm Katie Cullen. You can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at Kiaje. That's K I A X E T. I'm also on Arrow later tonight and Ruby tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys can catch me on Twitter at That Zach Wilson. And also here at After Buzz, tons of shows. Grim comes back Sunday. So excited. Uh, Resurrection 2, uh, Doctor Who, uh, this show, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Sleepy Hollow. So much fun stuff. Tune in. I'm Zach Wilson, and thanks for geeking out with us. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 